Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I had the opportunity to firmly express my disapproval to a caller, and end the conversation without facing any consequences. The second story. The night of four arrests. Chaos and drama unfold at the hotel. The third story. Underpaid employees unite and take revenge on travel agency. The first story is... Sir, I cannot just violate security procedures because you think I should. I'm a former Spectrum Internet Repair Lead, so I get a particularly odd escalation request. The caller in question is supposedly the IT guy for a country club, and is experiencing issues with their mailing list regarding customers who have domains from Spectrum. No problem, email issues do occur and I can certainly send off a ticket to our NOC team for investigation, as long as there is an authorized user calling in on behalf of an account that has service with us. This caller, dear reader, does not have service with us. The agent who's attempting to transfer this call to me can't get any additional information out of them, as they're refusing to speak to the Tier 1 reps. Fine, transfer him on over. Maybe I can at least talk to them IT professional to IT professional, and let them know our policy on these matters, or at the very least give them a voicemail or something for their boss, should they need it for internal ticket resolution. I might not be a sysadmin, particularly smart, or even working a job where my comp TIA certifications are useful, but I have a cursory awareness of cybersecurity, as well as how quickly I would have been promoted to customer should I have violated information security procedures on a call. I do my best to explain that while I understand he's trying to solve an issue, I'm currently unable to enact any resolutions or submit any requests to additional teams, as I cannot confirm or deny any information he gives me, as he's not an authorized user for any accounts or email addresses he provides, and I'm unwilling to violate security procedures. I understand that things can be frustrating, especially when it comes to red tape, but I need to speak with someone who's named on an account as those are the policies I'm beholden to, and that even if I did submit a ticket on his behalf, he'd have no way of getting an update on it, as he is once again not an authorized person on the accounts. I was trying to flag my boss down at the time to see if there was anything we could do for the guy, because maybe there was an issue for a few hundred email addresses. And getting one NOC ticket would certainly be a lot easier than having 100 plus people call in to report the same issue. This was certainly a unique request, and maybe there was a policy we had that I was simply unaware of if we could verify the IT guy was who he claimed to be, or there was some sort of mass report function. Very likely there wasn't, but I was ready to look like an idiot in front of my boss for the sake of trying to help people. Up until he opened his mouth again. This sets him off as he's profanely demanding that not only do I submit a ticket, but that I give him the account number used. The ticket number associated with the issue, while listing him as the sole point of contact for the ticket, and that he isn't getting off the phone with me until he has that information. He wants my full name, badge number, employee ID, phone extension, and email address because clearly I have no idea what I'm talking about, and he's going to report me in the whole charter spectrum to the FCC for this. Based on the amount of spittle I could hear over the line, I could only imagine him frothing at the mouth with at least two veins in his forehead throbbing across his tomato complexion. But luckily an air-conditioned call center kept me safe from this biological warfare. This just keeps going and going as he keeps screaming about ticket IDs and me wasting his precious time. I proceed to explain that it is once again against company policy to give out my last name, that my extension actually changes from day to day, and that while I do have a company email address, it wouldn't be of much use to attempt to contact me due to the strict filtering we have in place. My favorite part though is that since he was refusing to stop using a series of very loud profanities that contained a number of threats to my physical person, I got to invoke every Spectrum employee's favorite call policy. I got to flag it for review and terminate. I made sure to be as backhandedly polite as I could with it too, because after the 45 minute mark, my capacity for giving an F had started to wear thin. Sir, while your desire for resolution is admirable, as a fellow IT professional I would have hoped you could appreciate our policies regarding customer account security. As you've shown you cannot understand the need for proper security protocols to be followed, and will not cease your threatening language, I will be terminating this call. Click. And then I went to break so I could have one of the caffeinated chocolate bars and a monster from the break room that took far more of my paycheck than I care to admit. 
Part of me still thinks that call came from Spectrum's internal investigation team to try and catch people out, because there's just no way anyone actually working in IT as a sysadmin can't understand the need for proper account security and authorization. The second story is... A quadruple whammy for the cops. It's been an hour since my shift started as night audit, and it's already been an epping day and a half. So before I begin the story, let me ask you a question. What is a domestic abuser, a town's most wanted for hotel hopping and illegal substances dealing, a drunken RV driver and a drunken spectator all have in common? Well, they all got arrested in the space of 45 minutes. So let's start from the beginning. 11 p.m. I arrived to work. My coworker, a girl who's been here for a week, is looking panicked. Me, what's up? You looked freaked out. New girl. Well, there was a domestic abuse call. One of our guests called me and said that they heard what sounded like fighting and hitting coming from their neighbor. And I don't know what to do. M. Okay, well, let me go take a listen and you call the cops. One short walk to the room later, surprise, there is indeed a guy hitting his girlfriend. So I run back to the front desk and find out the cops are on the way to sort the situation out. Cool. Not the first time this has happened, not the last. We will let the cops sort it out and put him on the DNS. In the space of time it takes me to go get a cup of water, and the girl to use the finger scanner to clock out, we both hear an ungodly loud scraping noise out front, and I set down my water and make a mad dash out to the front. Now, my hotel has this overhang out front. It's wooden and old but sturdy. Currently there's a jacked up RV stuck, it's AC on top f beyond belief and it's ladder in the back tearing out the woodwork. The driver is smashed, like staggeringly drunk and standing outside swearing. Lovely. So I approach and he starts swearing me out, telling me how it's the hotel's fault for not telling him how low the clearance was. He wasn't a guest by the way. So by this point two squad cars have shown up for the domestic abuse. Both pull up on this now stuck RV. Drunken man, did you call the cops for this? M. They're here for an entirely different reason sir, but you will need to talk to them. This sends him into a fit and he tries to get back into the truck pulling this RV. Officer 1 at this point walks up and asks what's going on while Officer 2 calls for more squad cars because they don't have enough people to deal with this SH. I explained that in the time it took for the front desk to call after the domestic abuse, this man drunkenly just got his RV stuck in our overhang. So with a drunken man trying to hop back in his truck and presumably F off away from the cops, Officer 1 goes to have a nice talk with him. Officer 2 comes up at this point and asks about the domestic abuse, to which I tell him what room and hand him a key to the room just in case. It's been about 15 minutes since I started shift at this point. So Officer 1 is talking to the drunken man for a minute or two, before making him take a breathalyzer, and just from listening in while taking pictures of the damage to our building, dude blew a 0.24. For those who don't know, 0.08 is legally too drunk to drive. Great. So we have a drunk man smashing up his RV and our building. At this point, three more squad cars roll up and a good like 10 people have gathered to see what the hell's going on. Come in drunk and disorderly. Dude's smashed, but that's not illegal and it's way better looking than the guy driving. I'm trying to get people to disperse and go back to their rooms and point cops where they want to go. Situation's being handled, so less worries, right? If only. So drunk and disorderly starts shouting at the cops and telling them they're a-holes and basically being dumb, but the cops are ignoring him. This gets more interesting later. So with a few people still lingering, a cop walks up to me and asks me about two of the guests lingering. And I say I didn't check them in, but I can grab their names. He thanks me, then him and his partner go and start talking to them. The guy bolts and gets tackled to the ground, whereas the woman starts pitching a fit and screaming that she didn't do nothing. About a minute later, I'm back with the check-in info and surprise, these two turn out to be hotel hoppers and illegal substances dealers and have an actual most wanted paper. It's a good night for the cops. At this point, I'm just like, well, this can't possibly spiral out of my control anymore, but at least the cops are here. Oh, how wrong I was. Enter Captain Drunk and Disorderly, white knight and savior of all women. He decided it's a great idea to try and square up to a cop who was arresting the woman and started calling him a plethora of things that I won't repeat. The cop for his part just told him he needs to go back to his room and sober up. Captain D&D did not take this well. So what do you think? In this man's infinite wisdom that he did, did he take the advice and just go back to his room? Did he have a civil debate with the cop about arresting women? No, he threw a punch at the cop, and then shortly after let out a rather surprised noise as another cop who knew a good SH start when he saw one, promptly made his way over and got the guy on the ground and in handcuffs. So Captain D&D, &D, Mr. and Mrs. Illegal Substances Dealer, start getting loaded up into squad cars. 
There are like six here at this point and I decide to check in on drunken RV. He's accepting he's too drunk to drive and will be going to jail, but wants to get his RV unstuck. Ha <laughs> no. Cop tells him that one of the officers with his permission will get his RV unstuck, but the dude's pretty adamantly not letting that happen. He says he's sober enough to do it himself. He's not. So he gets arrested and a tow company is called. Cause lifting the RV higher is gonna help. Turns out that's only slightly what they did. And now the dude's RV is no longer stuck in our entryway with only minor wood damage. So far, tally of people arrested, four. My sanity, long given up on salvaging the situation. At this point, F it cops have it, I'm gonna go smoke. Now our property is shaped like a horseshoe. Front office in the center and on either side is our rooms with outdoor access. I took the shorter route to one of our smoking spots and got to watch a woman, covered in bruises, pleading with a cop not to arrest her boyfriend because he wasn't hitting her. Her boyfriend's in the back of a cop car while a female officer is talking to her, trying to get her to calm down. I'm already here, so I just politely not pay attention and start smoking, watching the front office from the spot. Still a cluster F over there. A few minutes later, a cop walks up and says they've arrested the four and are probably arresting the abuser in the next few minutes and asked what I wanted done. RestoreMyPeace.jpg a solid 20 minutes later, there's one cop car, a distraught girl crying in a room, people have disappeared, and there are two cops I'm chatting with waiting for the tow truck. Another 15 minutes pass and the tow truck shows up, says F that sucks, and then unsticks the RV and tows it off. So yeah, that's how my night is going. The third story is, what happens when you underpay people? So I've worked for a very popular travel agency as customer support agent for airline tickets for the past three years. Yes, during the pandemic as well. It was a tough three years, but we hold on. Most of the employees worked hard to ensure good customer service. The company always gave us small tokens of appreciation and small raises. After a while, all of this stopped. They introduced draconian rules regarding attendance and payment, but that's not all. During the summer, there was way too much work to handle, so they decided to take a couple of sales teams to handle calls while we advised on the issues. The insult was they were doing three times less work while getting paid three times more because their sales. To get an impression, they would take the calls, put the passenger on hold, and ask us what to do. They were really dumb. Even after working two years in the industry, they didn't know simple things like airline alliances. But they got much more than us. After things calmed down, we reversed back to the old workflow. It was calm for a while, so no stress. But eventually more work crept up since people started to travel again, so we were overloaded again. Because of this, we asked a better pay. Like three times more since the industry's standard pay for customer support in the travel industry have gone up. Experienced customer support agents in travel industry are very rare, as it requires advanced technical knowledge. I applied to another travel agency. Better pay and an effing awesome office. Turns out a lot of other people from my current company went there. Sales, IT, HR. All places and they all liked it. Now it turns out that all my teammates from the night shift, I also worked in night shift, applied as well, and a better news is that we all accepted. Even a better news is that basically nothing changes, since I'll be working with the same people. As for the revenge, the company will lose the last of their experienced agents and on top of that, the entire night shift, and nobody wants that shift. On a broader note, I observed a lot of companies are giving better pay for IT and salespeople, while the others are paid scraps. Customer support is underappreciated and underfunded, but handle all SH storms and defend your company from losses. Well, guess what? The effed up situations would not happen if you didn't hire dumb salespeople and IT idiots. Yes, you have skills, but you always F things up with cheap software. As a result, you have bad reputation for non-existent customer support. Bad reputation, less customers. Less customers, less profit. Less profit means bankruptcy. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.